I wonder how often we get something for nothing. Is there really such a thing? Because isn't there always a catch? Isn't there always a price to pay? We're often faced with those too good to miss offers that we just can't refuse. Offers which seem so good, but there's always some sort of cost implication. Each time we visit the supermarket, we're faced with those various buy one, get one free offers. And in theory, we get one item for free. I wonder what would have happened last night in Tesco's if I tried to get the person on the checkout to give me just the free item without having to buy the other one, which cost £9. Somehow, I don't think it would have worked. Because I need to have bought the first item in the beginning. There was one time when I thought that I was getting something for free. A place on a 10-week men's only fitness programme. However, during that first session, there was a catch. Because there's always a catch. Firstly, after all the paperwork came out, there was some gentle exercise, so they described it. But I found it most difficult to walk, let alone drive the car home that night. As I hobbled to the car, I thought to myself, Gareth, what on earth have you agreed to? These next ten weeks or so are going to cost you. I didn't know whether to laugh or cry. After a while, the pain began to ease. However, sitting down and getting back up again was a challenge for a few days. Today we live in a world which has become accustomed by contracts and agreements. If we are to get one free, we must buy one first. That's what the offer is all about. If we sign up to a 10-week fitness programme, then we do have to work hard to hit those targets and goals week by week. Because there are very few things which actually give us something for nothing. The parable of the vineyard workers is much the same in that it's based on the agreement of doing a fair day's work for a fair day's pay. The situation described in the parable is not dissimilar to the sort of thing that still happens even today. Workers being hired for an agreed rate of pay for an agreed amount of work. But in this parable, Jesus turns that idea of some sort of contract completely upside down. We may think that this parable is totally unfair. How could Jesus tell this story of the poor laborers who work all day and end up getting a poor deal? Those being hired at the beginning of the day end up with those who just work for one hour. What's fair? about this. If we had a business and were an employer, we wouldn't gain much loyalty from our workforce if we followed that model of employment. Jesus told this parable after Peter was inquiring what sort of things the disciples might gain from following him. If any of the disciples were to be bold enough to ask this question, it would be Peter as he puts his foot in it once again. But in some ways, he's only asking what we would ask. Peter, I'm sure, thought he'd kept his side of the agreement. He'd left everything, absolutely everything, and followed Jesus. Peter knew he'd kept his side of the agreement, but he wasn't sure what Jesus' side of the bargain was. Peter's natural reaction then was that he wanted to know what his fair share would be, especially as he'd given up so much. Peter's only asking the same questions that many would ask today. What's in it for me? Or if I do it, what will I get in return? Or if I buy it, what will I get free? So to put Peter right, Jesus tells this parable of the vineyard workers. To us, the agreement of the parable doesn't look very fair at all. 
It goes against our understanding of fairness. And surely they should all be paid according to their hours of work. But if we look carefully, these words can reveal something quite different. The laborers who were hired at the beginning of the day made an agreement. They made an agreement with the landowner as to how much they would be paid. They make a contract about their just reward. The other workers who were hired throughout the day make no so much contract and therefore were paid the amount which the landowner saw fit. This just happens to be the same amount as everyone else. But this parable isn't just about reading the small print. It really does tell us something about God's never-ending grace. Now, when I was at school, I hated those sports which involved a ball. Either a round one or an oval one, I really wasn't interested. I didn't like getting dirty and was never very skilled or coordinated. I was one of those who always seemed to miss catching the ball, or when I did get it, I managed to pass it to someone very quickly so I didn't have it in my hands. But I was good at swimming, and I managed to stay away from all those team sports of rugby, football, and cricket. But what I really hated most was when we were all lined up to pick teams. I was always one of those last few to be picked, rejected because my lack of sporting and athletic abilities. However, that said, I know I wasn't alone. I'm sure many others have experienced something similar, some kind of rejection or that feeling of being unwanted. And as we ponder today's gospel, did those people standing around in the marketplace all day feel unwanted and hopeless? Focusing on just this, the labourers chosen last can help us deal with our niggling sense of unfairness that we may feel about this gospel today. Yes, some of those workers had been working all day in the scorching heat. And it doesn't seem right for those who started later in the day to get the same wage. If we focus on those who were chosen first, we risk falling into the trap that the landowner mentions at the very end of the story. Are you envious because I am so generous? But let's for a moment put ourselves in the shoes of those unwanted labourers, the ones who presumably didn't look very strong or maybe were wearing the wrong clothes or looked like the wrong type of people or for whatever reason they didn't get chosen earlier in the day. If we put ourselves in their shoes, we can share in their joy as they're chosen and then going on to receive that same reward. All of a sudden, those people were considered as good as the stronger ones, the ones whose faces fitted, the ones who were filled with confidence. Peter wanted to know from Jesus what kind of reward the disciples might expect for giving up everything to follow him. And the words of this story were his response. All of the laborers, the first and the last, represent everyone who serves God. People working together. However, sometimes our human way of thinking is so different from what Jesus taught. However long it takes for someone to join his team, the reward will always be the same. God's system of justice isn't like any human ones that we know. God doesn't give according to what is fair or according to what is deserved. The Gospels remind us that God is full of compassion and grace and that God's generosity is for all so that everyone can know the joy of being known by him. Those who have come to know God early in their lives and served in the vineyard for many years can sometimes feel greater than those who come later. However, Jesus frequently speaks out about those who get above themselves. And from this story, 
we can see that everyone's reward is the same. And like Warren Gatland or Rob Page, who wants to pick the very best players for their team, God chooses and calls despite any weaknesses or faults and despite the ability to perform. In response to God's call, some have been working in the vineyard from right at the beginning of the day, and some have not heard the call until much later. But with God, there's no difference. Because Jesus gave his life for the weak and the strong alike. Those for whom faith is easy, and for those whose faith struggles. Those who have served him in all their lives, and those who join him later. We all serve a God who is generous, loving, compassionate, and full of unbelievable grace. God reward remains the same for everyone, and yet the rewards for knowing God remain far beyond our own understanding. May we always accept God's loving grace and receive this reward gladly in our hearts and in our minds so that others may know it too. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.